Hi everybody, what's up? Welcome back to Prospect Central 101. My name is Chris Robbins, and today I'm joined by two very special guests on the channel. Gavino. Hey, I'm Drake. And yeah, welcome guys. Uh, and today, uh, we are going to be watching some Taven Bryan. He is a defensive lineman from Florida. Uh, he is a junior who has officially declared Six listed at six four two ninety five. Uh, so, based on that initial stuff, uh, where do you guys see him fitting in at the NFL level on the defensive line, uh, based on his size? Based on his size, I feel like he would fit in as a three tech. Personally, he's not going to be lined up over the center. To be honest, so I see him strictly as a three tech. Shake. Over over the center would be a nose tackle, but I think he could play one tech and three tech in a four three scheme, or one tech all the way through four tech or five tech, even in a three four scheme. Not really five, one tech through four tech, really. So, do you guys think he could play three four ends, perhaps? I think he could. I think he's got the size for it. I personally think he could play. Uh, defensive end in the 3-4 as well. Interesting. Uh, so we see here uh, on the database, he actually did start a game as a freshman and two as a sophomore. So he did play uh, three years as a college player for Florida. Uh, that was a Navy SEAL. Interesting. Um, he did declare early officially. A positive character, at least from this here. Uh, so it doesn't appear that we have any off the field concerns. Uh, so have you guys watched any Tim and Brian tape heading into this or not? Yes. Yeah, Drake and I watched his Texas A&M tape, and I think that's when he started to really <clears throat> get noticed by most because that was some really impressive tape. Yeah, that was some really filthy stuff. So, what do you guys, just from your basic background knowledge, before getting into a deep breakdown, uh, know, or at least have the idea about him uh, from what you've seen already? <clears throat> well, I think the first thing that people look at um, is the stat sheet, and they kind of just notice that he doesn't really fill up the stat sheet necessarily, as opposed to these other interior defensive line linemen, but the first thing that um, pops up to my mind when I watch this tape is his first step. And I think of his the former Gators like Caleb Brantley or Jonathan Bullard, and they were really good as far as their, their first step. But he does know how to cover a lot of ground, to be honest. But a negative thing uh, that comes to my mind is it seems like he really doesn't have a plan. So he can get into the backfield, but I've noticed that he doesn't seem to know like what's going on in the play. So he could definitely do like a push-pull, um, an offensive lineman, but he, still, he looks very confused. So it's definitely more so like of a, not a technique issue, but more of just like a, a mental thing. So... Hmm, interesting. Drake? He seems like a guy who's capable of taking over games. But consistency seems to have been somewhat of an issue with him. But when he's on, he looks just about as good or better than any other defensive line prospect in this class. And it's just... I don't know. He... It's like he has all pro potential, but at the same time, something about him just kind of makes you feel unsure. But, I don't know, I think you put this guy in between two solid edge rushers, and your pass rush is going to benefit immensely from having him. All right. He's going to command double teams and free up rushes, rushing lanes for other players, no doubt. Nice, nice. Uh, so you guys ready to crack into this? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, actually, real quick here, I'm going to put this on uh, 
at least 0.75. If you guys want to slow it down and rewind at any time, just let me know. 93 right there. Penetration, you know. Yeah, right off the bat. And we're starting with the Kentucky game, uh, since this was earlier in the year. This was the third game. Oh, nice late hit. <clears throat> so far, it seems to be pretty slippery. Yeah, I mean, right off the bat, those first two plays, he totally disrupted both of them. Off the double. Needs a little but he bit. was doubled. Yeah, he needs a little bit more fun when he spin move as well from that play. Right there. He got held. He did get held, but he was still driving to the sideline pretty well with that. He wasn't allowing for a cutback lane to be created. Push. About five yards. Man handling that dude. It's like Gavino said, he doesn't pad the stats. For some reason, he doesn't, which is almost hard to believe with how much destruction he does in the backfield. But he's constantly wreaking havoc in the backfield, and he's not undersized, so he's probably going to be a pretty good pro. Gavino is a Chargers fan, and just the thought of putting this dude between Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram, I think it'd be, like, terrifying. <clears throat> Anything in the middle. Chargers need a defensive tackle or a linebacker. <laughs> And also, too, I'm a Detroit guy, so I'd be interested to see how he would fit in a hybrid working with Patricia. He'd, he'd probably be a very good player for Patricia. Um, that makes a player there. Yeah, good point. Uh, great motor on that particular play. Nice job pursuing the... That's what I like ball. to see in just like a defensive tackle. I mean, just not giving up on the play, so... Yeah, Chris, I think Patricia could do a lot of really good stuff with Taven. Not saying there wouldn't be players that would necessarily be better fits, but he would be a very good player in Patricia's hybrid scheme. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to doing an oboe and showing Evans' breakdown. Those two are going to be a lot of fun for me. I'm starting to hope that Evans doesn't make it pack, past pick 16. <laughs> I'd like to see him next to CJ Mosley. Oh, man. As I am a Ravens fan. <laughs> it's, really a good, like it's a good draft this year, though. It, he, he takes on double teams really well. And yeah, I'm actually going to go back real quick and slow this last play down because I really want to point out his. I know you mentioned when you guys mentioned something about this earlier, but just like watch this guy's explosion and, and burst and quick first step right off the line here. You're gonna see him right here. That was Gavino talking about Florida players first step. And then it takes a while for the ball to snap. But, like, right there, he's just right, bam, exploding. First guy to make contact there, and he's already five yards deep. Like, what, a second in? Two seconds in? Penetration, man. He just does a great job. In the job past couple plays, time. while you guys were talking about, like, in terms of pitch for teams, that's a point that I made up that, I mean, he's already kind of up, like, uh, like past 
the line of scrimmage and just beating his guy, but the play is already like 10 yards down the field. So that's what I talk about in terms of having a plan. Like I like the defensive linemen that have a plan. You're not just there to like bully their offensive line and then expect the play to happen. So you have to have a plan um, to me in order to. But see, well, that's where I think someone like Patricia could help Taven find his plan. Nice bull rush on that play. He seems to play with really good oh. leverage. I've only seen him like, get taken down once so far. The work that Patricia has done with New England's defensive line over the course of the season has been nothing short of phenomenal. Especially considering the guys they lost and their linebackers. I, mean, I was doing um, a review on uh, Patricia's scheme, and I was seeing guys like Marquise Flowers, uh, Jordan Richards, Dietrich Wise. Like, I mean, these are guys that are, are relative no names. And there's just man, Dietrich Wise had some hype last year, but but yeah, Patricia has, has, but especially when you consider how they were playing the first six weeks of the season or so. Mm-hmm. It's just been phenomenal the way they've closed out. Especially since they lost Hightower. Especially since they lost Hightower, yeah. Nice anchor there, not getting taken down. Another thing I will point out is he does seem to be lining up over the guards for a large majority, if not all, of the plays so far. So 3-Tech does seem to be where Florida is playing him the most. Clay just didn't go his way that time. But he was in on that tackle. Also, for the viewers, I am a little bit sick, so I apologize for the coughing noises. I just want to throw that out there. Okay, man. Just, man, that first, first step. That explosion off the ball. It's fantastic. That combined with the high motor. I mean, that in itself right there. Another thing I thought of too is if we did come to Detroit, we did just take Davis and Tabor last year, so we'd be basically 4 to 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That might not be a good thing, actually. Well, I mean, look at what the Falcons are doing. <laughs> I mean, with the Falcons with their Clemson guys, they have Greg Easier, Vic Beasley. Uh, I'm sure I'm Clemson, forgetting Clemson something. has had a little bit more success than Florida recently. But, I mean, like, just that whole idea of, like, getting guys to, like, know each other and have that familiarity and that chemistry. For sure. For sure. It could be an interesting move. Falcons like Clemson and LSU guys, and... Those teams are, those teams are a little bit better than Florida. But Florida has been offensively terrible for a while now. Their quarterback has been, oh, just that high motor at the end there. That was a terrible late hit, though. I think Taven is the best. Player out of Florida, I've seen in a while though. Interesting. Not a fan of Coin CT's Davis. Any of them? You know, I was actually a pretty big fan of T's, and uh, I liked Quincy too. But I think Taven is the best one I've seen out of all of these recent guys. I mean, just the, the frequency in which he impacts the play. 
like that play right there. Yeah, I mean, quarterback. Was, quarterback was probably scared as shit because he was right up in front of him. Quarterback probably throws a much better ball if he doesn't feel like he's pressured right there. I see his footwork. The quarterback's footwork totally got thrown off because of Taven. It looked like it was an RPO, too, so he probably didn't even expect to keep that. Forced him to throw in the double coverage. Because that running back was basically tackled while I was still making the play. Oops. Yeah, I mean, that's just awesome impact. Hey, my computer died. <laughs> I was like, you were awfully quiet for there for a minute. <laughs> we're still live, though, right? Yeah, you're good. Okay. You didn't really miss too much, to be honest. You were just talking about a couple of... You did miss one good play. But... Yeah. But there will be more. Oh, for sure. Only about halfway through the first tape, so. He does a good job at using his hands, and that's what I like. I mean, he's not going to just be like, I'm like Vita Vea, where he has the size where he can just like really bull rush you up to like the his guy. He does a pretty good job at using his hands. That's what I like to see with the defensive lineman. The one thing I will point out, though, so far is Good play by that Kentucky player right there. The one thing I will say so far is that I haven't seen him use any moves, though. He seems to just be winning with strength, athleticism, and bull rush. I would like to see him be a little bit more technically sound with his moveset. Use, like, a, a, a good spin move, rip, swim, those types of things. But maybe we'll see that later on in the year, too, because this was only the third game. So we'll see. We'll check that in the post. He, so he just spun good. around right there, but I don't know if I would necessarily uh, qualify that as a spin move. That's, yeah, same thing. <laughs> like, a lot of his plays seem to be winning with, with that bursting first step and explosion and just bringing guys off the snap. Yep, maybe. And another thing to point out, too, about this particular tape is that Kentucky doesn't exactly run anything close to a pro-style offense. In fact, I'd like to think that they're basically the exact opposite of a pro-style offense. <coughs> So it does make things a bit more difficult for linemen to replace. You got bullied there. <clears throat> Stunt. Almost worked. I would like to see uh, the pro team run stunts with him. He does have the athleticism to be able to do that. Yeah, I agree. Oh, there we go. In on that sack. I know they're going to show another look. So. Just quick off the line of scrimmage there. Yeah, here's the other, the other view. Bam. Just strikes the double. Well, the other guy was technically being doubled, but 
As soon as that tackle moved over, he just got right around the, the guard. Nice just level. watching him play, to me, is like... Imagine if Gronkowski played a defensive tackle. <laughs> <laughs> that would be Taven, bro. I mean, Gronkowski did play linebacker at some point, didn't he? I think he played linebacker like a snap or two. I have no idea. Yeah, I think at some point he played linebacker. It might have been high school or college, but... Clutch time here. Let's see if he makes any big plays late in the game. Good, good thing to point out. One tech. So I lose to your point earlier, Jake. <clears throat> Back to that one sack that he had. Duke went awesome. back and clutch right there. I went back and rewatched that sack, and I mean, he he beat that offensive lineman out of his stance, and I noticed right there that he throws a uh, a club and a, a rip to get uh, vertical there. So it kind of goes back to what you're talking nice. about, Chris, with the way you'd New like set. to see. Mm -hmm. saying you saw there again. You saw on that last play as well. So, yeah, he does have that rip move, which is nice. Just taking a little bit of time to find it. Nice anchor. Unfortunately, he couldn't get off the block, but really nice job not being forced back. He's just going to stay engaged, one arm for each guy here. And he's not moving. Oof, that's a hold. That should be the end of the game. 10 second runoff. Right there, he's getting held. That should be game over. Ah, uh, that's annoying. How is doesn't have 10 second runoff? Help Florida one. <coughs> so uh, that was pretty solid first, tape there. Yeah, that was the yeah, first game. Uh, any particular thoughts that you guys have uh, from that one? Just like positives, negatives, things you want to see him work on, things that you thought he did really well. Penetration, man. Really, it's a it's a dirty word, but in the NFL, it's a very not dirty word. It's a very good word that every team wants defensively. He needs some refining, but that's could be easily coached. But I would say that he is probably one of the more athletic uh, interior defensive linemen going into this uh, draft class. Every Sunday, you hear them say penetration. They're, they're not getting penetration, or they're winning because they're getting penetration and along the defensive line. And he just brings penetration. He's a force. And yeah, I mean, speaking on the whole dirty thing, this probably isn't where you were going with that, but I mean, it kind of is a dirty word in the NFL, too. Like, you're doing that dirty work up front. <laughs> yeah, and, for and, sure. And, and you're, you're, you're winning those tough physical battles at the line and that's honestly a lot of games are winning the trenches nowadays especially he has a really really nice push pull move and from the tape that i've watched i think that's what he uses the most <clears throat> and just that quickness you can't really get any better in terms of uh the pass rush in this class i mean this is a loaded interior defensive line class, but I would say that he's up there with being one like one of the more athletic ones. Man, I was saying you put this dude between Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram and other teams are gonna have problems. That's what we need is an anchor, man. And you know, people mock linebackers in the, the first round. While that'd be good and there's a significant drop off, 
we need that anchor on the defensive line really bad, more than the linebacker, in my opinion. And that's why a guy like Taven Bryan or like Vita Vea would be perfect for us in the first round or something like that. And another thing to point out, too, is you guys are talking about the anchor uh, of the line. That seems to be where a lot of teams can use their, their work. I mean, there's a lot of teams, they have those those edge guys already that just really don't have that interior force. And we saw with the Rams this year with Aaron Donald, if you're able to get that interior pressure, I mean, bam, you're winning games. Mm. You don't even necessarily have to have the best edge guys out there to be able to get that into your pressure and win big. The one thing I would say before we jump into this other tape, <clears throat> the one thing, I mean, it's not a bad thing that he needs to work on, but I feel like he's <clears throat> over-aggressive and, like, his lane discipline needs work. And I brought it up earlier in the – before we started the tape, is that it goes back to having a plan. It's, he's really over-aggressive. And the ball's already, like, 10, 10 yards up the field. And then he's kind of looking around like, oh, crap. Like, where's the yeah, play at? I totally see your point. I, but he does, like, I see what you're saying about sometimes he's so aggressive and he gets so much penetration that, like, it opens up where a, a mobile quarterback could take off in that lane that he's created. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm I'm taking the over aggressive guy under the, before the under aggressive oh, absolutely. guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it seems to be a lot easier to ring in aggressiveness than ring out in people, especially when you get to the NFL. He has the tools to be a double digit sack guy, though. I mean, at the next level. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to be like Aaron Donald or anything, I mean, per se, because I mean, Aaron Donald is one of the, probably one of the better interior pass rushers of this, what, century? Yeah. But, I mean, uh, there's, there's still some, some quality defensive tackles out there that I, I'm sure you could think of as a comp for him. Yeah. Instead of being off the block there. Another thing I'll point out too is he seems to be a three down guy. I don't have any endurance issues with him like I do Vea. I don't have any uh, pass rush or run support issues. I think he can play both. Yeah, he still makes plays deep into the third quarter. So. Oh, what a hit by the safety. Jeez, I'm not watching tape on you, but man, double, almost straight up the ice guy. Oh my god, what a lucky pick. Ooh, he just said that double. <coughs> if the quarterback cut that, that's a sack. Oh my god, that first step. Jesus. Just ran guys up and make plays. Counter. He shoots the gaps really, really well. Oh man. Just push back, disengage, rush the quarterback. Beautiful. First down, second down. And third down. So yeah, three down player. See him went to the left side on that play. Ideally, I kind of want to see him win on the other other side, so he could follow the back. But I 
Oh man, you don't need to bring on touch. Terrible blocking scheme. Almost got off the double too. At times it almost seems like he's literally like on a rocket pad, like one of those like launcher things, you know what I'm talking about? The springboarding forward. Yeah, and you just see like really launches himself forward. It's like it's honestly really nice to see. You know, one thing that is somewhat bizarre about him to me, though, is he seems so much more disruptive on pass plays than he seems effective against run plays. And he does seem to be shipped out every once in a while, too. <clears throat> and I think, yeah, I think maybe it's just because when they run the ball, I almost feel like when other teams run the ball, they specifically scheme double blocks on him in that situation even more so. I don't chips. know. Yeah, or chips. Because, I mean, we see it there. Like, he can. Yeah, that was play. That got off his block really well and <clears throat> made the play. So. Counter move. Beautiful. And like you don't see any problems with penetration there. No, not at all. But yeah, double teams in one situation seem to be at times at least an issue. Oh Pushing God. that guy all the way back, man. How far that's, was that? That's what I'm talking about. Just... This place starts where? A few yards up the field, like four. This place starts at the 25. And he got some almost to the 15. Right by the end of the play, it's the 15. Oh my God, what a hit. So he got like 10 yards of push on that play. That's ridiculous. In the NFL, that's a sack. Beautiful. Nice. Dog. That's how you use athletics in the DT. Just get around him and then even like bend. Oh my god. You're not going to call the holding, are you? <clears throat> if you're calling the roughing the pass, you need to call holding on that too. He was already making contact before the throw guy up too. So even they really called that rough in the passer. That was really stupid. That was really stupid. Not only was he being held, but the contact was made prior to the throw. Yeah, I feel like he already had his hand on it before he even threw it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Ball get off. That, that was, was insane. Yeah. That was Cleveland Farrell ask right there. Jesus. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Tried to win the inside. Looked like it was supposed to be a stun, but the other guy came over too late. And there's what, yeah, we know what you were talking about earlier just lack of awareness on that particular play. Yep. <clears throat> Oh 
I can see an NFL team, particularly if you're like in the AFC South and you got this kid like playing Tennessee, or maybe the NFC South and you're playing like a Cam Newton, maybe using him as a spy, so that way you can make sure that he's keeping his eyes on the backfield. I feel like that would be a good way to, to try and train him to be able to do that. It's just by putting him in these spy situations. That's, that's some creative thinking. I think he could be an effective spy in situations. And he has the athleticism to do it. I mean, it's not like a 4-5 guy or anything, but I mean, I can see him running in the 4-7s, 4-8s. I think he'll run 4-8 at the Combine, in my opinion, somewhere in there. Yeah, 4-8-6, 4-8-5. What I'm really interested to see from an athletic standpoint is his vertical and broad jump because he seems to have that lower body explosion off the ball. And I also want to see his splits, like his 10 yard, 20 yard split. Yeah. Let's see how quickly he can cover short distances and run plays. Oh my goodness, just that block shed. Oh, actually that was the last place. So let's just go back here. That's a good note to end this on. Shoot. Let me pause this real quick while I can get this up. It's just on this last play. Maybe it's the next one. Right here, he's he was being doubled, but he's just gonna escape that and launch tackle forward. So, uh, that was Tatum Bryan versus Florida State. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts from that particular game? First off, we'll start with that. You go, you go ahead, Gavino. I think we finally got to see what I talked about earlier in terms of what is going on with the play, because you brought it up, Chris. And there was that play where the ball was already up the field and uh, he was still like, past the, the line of scrimmage, but he didn't seem to really have an idea what was going on. Um, in this particular game, we were able to see him take on double teams really well. Uh, he excels with that push-pull move, and I think that's really uh, the most effective one for him. So. Pretty good tape overall, though. I've been really impressed with the, the tape that I've watched um, on Taven Bryan. Still view him as a, uh, a three-tech. Um, he could probably play a three-four defensive end. And uh, I think he's going to be pretty solid at the next level, whoever takes him. Shake. I honestly think he has all pro potential with a, a very high floor. Watching him, I'm not sure what it is that's not translating to the stat sheet, but I'm seeing constant penetration. And uh, he, does, he only has like six tackles for a loss this year and like four sacks. But the tackles for the loss thing is the weirdest part about it to me. Because like, you're spending so much time in the backfield, how come you're not blowing up more run plays back there? And I don't know. Drake, what was the point that you made up Drake, earlier about him against the run? Well, I just he seems more effective as, on passing plays than he does 
at stopping the run, and maybe it's part of your point about him being over aggressive, and he just opens up lanes sometimes as opposed to shutting the play down in the backfield. But at other times, you also see him. You also see him like follow the play. Like if they're running yeah. to the left, you'll see him following the play, and it's he doesn't give up. That's the thing you gotta love about it is you don't. He doesn't give up ever. Just looking here at the 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 tab you have open up, Chris, in terms of his stats. His stats. Uh, the thing that stands out to me the most is that the tape that most people have probably seen or the first tape they've watched is that Texas A&M game. And that's um, what really, really stood out to me in terms of the, the games I watched. And the stats in that game definitely do not lie. Yeah, and it just – he's going to be very good in my opinion. He's going to be very good. I have a – Man, put that dude between Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa. <laughs> Other teams are going to have problems. He's on my wish list, man. So uh, I, can, I, can, I can see where he'd be good in Detroit, too. Yeah, especially if they get Patricia. Well, it looks like we are because we told all the other candidates that they were out of the race, but we're looking to hire Patricia, so... Hell yeah, man. I hope you get him. That'd be a great hire. I think Patricia's going to be a great head coach, personally. Yeah, yeah. so do I. So do I. Uh, so, yeah, now is actually when we're supposed to talk about fixing things. We were supposed to start by going over Florida State tape first, but I mean, you guys already started talking about it, so any, any like, fix, uh, any, like, general thoughts just on his season, uh, any uh, possible, like, where you guys see him range wise like in the draft going like pick like 15 to 30 type stuff i see him I between think, 10 and 22 i think somewhere in there goes i'm thinking 20 to 30 and i know that he would be a good fit with um the chargers like you mentioned drake but to be honest i see a guy like at 17 if we were choosing between like Vita Vea, Duran Payne, and Taven Bryan, if it came down to that. Knowing uh, the philosophy of our GM, um, I think he would go with Vea. And just seeing how we are against the run, we're almost dead last. And Vita Vea is that true 0-1 tech nose tackle that we need. Yeah. Um, and that's why when people ask me in terms of who would you take at 17? It would be Vita Vea, but Taven Bryan would fit in with that 20 to to like 32, like the end of the first. If not very, very early day two, he would go at the latest. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, just any final thoughts uh, on, on what you guys want to see him do at the Combine, for instance, maybe uh, in interviews? Just I bet he bench presses things. a lot. <laughs> I bet he bench presses a lot. Probably. I think he will, and I think after the 40-yard, um, that's when he's gonna just going to start to, I wouldn't say skyrocket, but he's going to go up. On, you know, the you thing know. is, even a team, everyone assumes that Oakland's going to go linebacker, but even a team like Oakland could use this guy. Put him with because they're weak at defensive tackle. You put him their entire Mack. front seven. I mean, with the exception of like Khalil Mack, Mack is pretty, pretty weak, and then Bruce Irvin too. So, Vita Vea to Oakland will be kind of nasty. Him with Bruce. that's what I, I'm scared of that, and then also Vita Vea going to the Redskins is a possibility too. So, there's teams ahead of us that could take Vea. So, kind of worried about that. A little bit. But. I, think either, I think the Redskins are going to pick Vea or Payne. I think they'll pick one of those two players. Everyone has safety also linked to them, but I think they go. That Monte so, Nicholson has been playing pretty well for them. Yeah. And they might be getting Stuart Cravens back, too. I think they'll be going Vea or Payne. I think they'll either put Payne next to Jonathan Allen, which would be pretty badass. Or I think they'll put Vea in there because they have a need for a true nose tackle. 
And Chris, uh, where do you see um, Kevin Bryan going since we already addressed that? Yeah, um, as far as fits go, I mean, we already kind of talked about this. I think he could be interesting for Patricia defense. I really like him in that 3-4 end spot, uh, and especially with us being yeah. a 3-tech. Uh, I could see him being that hybrid type of guy that would fit our, our new defense. Uh, also, uh, without having a draft order off the top of my head, uh, I think without knowing who the Titans have, I think that him next to Jarrell Casey could be interesting. That'd I mean, be a pretty damn good role. pick. That'd uh, be a good pick. So, just places like that, uh, where he wouldn't necessarily have to be a star, maybe even the Rams next to Aaron Donald. Uh, he wouldn't necessarily have to be the guy, uh, but he could be like that, that solid presence, that, that guy that could open up holes for the rest of the defense, uh, places like that. Uh, but yeah, a playoff team, ideally, somewhere like you guys were saying, in the, in the 20s probably. Uh, would be draft wise. Don't don't let him get to um, the Patriots because you know him with the Patriots would just be nasty. So yeah, New England was sure. interesting too. They they would probably pick him if he was there. <laughs> I feel like they yeah. probably would. An edge rusher is needed with New England, but if he were there, then that's a pick I could see them going as well. And yeah, like even. Like, what I was talking about with us in Detroit, like, he could be that hybrid type of guy at the end spot. Uh, like, that 3 Yeah, that'd be good. Three, three, three if Detroit guy. passes on it, if Detroit were to pass on him, do you think Buffalo might take him with one of their two picks? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, an interesting they're point. Going, they're almost certainly going defensive tackle. It's just a matter of, do they go with first? They, uh, if Wilkins comes out, Wilkins... Uh, or, or pain, or I mean, who's going to be there? And next thing, other thing, too, to bring up is you guys think that maybe with all the talent and defensive tackle in this class, I mean, there's five if looking to clear six guys at defensive tackle who could go get first round grades. Do you think that that hurts them at all? Just the depth of this class and the amount of perhaps that have high grades, perhaps. But the thing is, teams might a lot of teams might grade him as the highest. They might, especially if they're look because some teams I think, especially four or three teams are gonna look at uh, Brian and Payne a little bit more than Vea, and three four teams are gonna look at Vea probably just as much as Brian and Payne. Uh, but I see to me the four main guys are Payne, Brian, Vea. And uh, Maurice Hurst. Yeah, Ping, Brian, Vea, Hurst, and uh, possibly Wilkins in there. I don't even like Wilkins as much as I like those other four, but that's just me personally. Interesting. I I know I'm forgetting someone because there's supposed to be six, too. Uh, You know what? Let me look at this real quick. Um... Phillips. Harrison Phillips is up there, too. Harrison yeah. Phillips. Yeah. He's not my favorite, either. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, guys. Uh, any, I know we already kind of adjust this, but uh, any more final thoughts? I think I put in my, my final thoughts, so I've got nothing. You, Drake? Really, uh, really high ceiling, high floor player. Nice. I agree. He so, never gives up. I got a lot. That's my favorite thing about Taven Bryan is he never gives up. Yep. For sure. For sure. All right, guys. Well, uh, do you have anything that you want to plug in real quick? Anywhere where they can find anywhere your fans can find you guys other than LDT. If you guys have, if the if you viewers haven't heard of Lombardi's draft talk, that's usually where I hang out, and sometimes I get lucky and get to hang out on other people's videos, like Chris when he's so kind. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, for sure. Uh, any like Twitter account, Instagram, any of that stuff you guys want to want to add in here? I am on both um, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, so it's Gavino. Uh, my name G A V I N O underscore fitness. Uh, reason for fitness is I'm a strength coach for high school athletes and 
trainer for general population. So just out of curiosity, people were wondering about that. But you could find me on both those platforms. And just like Drake, I'm also in Lombardi's draft talk as well. And I am uh, featured in videos with Chris, Chris and uh, others sometimes. Yeah, guys. Uh, so thank you guys again, both you guys, for joining the video. And uh, to all you guys doing this, glad you guys uh, were able to stop by and watch this breakdown. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, learned a thing or two. Uh, and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, uh, like the video, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, links to our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram will be in the description below. Uh, so thank you guys for joining. Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and peace out for now.